Hey guys, so we're going to do a spirit talk. I'm going to kind of do a, a kind of an interesting one. And I might do several spirit talks, picking a few people. Um, am, I, am I kind of holding them up to judgment? Am I kind of picking on them a little bit? Yeah, maybe I am. Um, you know, because I, I really feel that, that some things need to be brought to, to the forefront. Um, especially with, um, you know, certain things going on with, you know, churches and the dark side um, that some can have. Um, and I know there's good ones out there, but um, this is this is what I've been kind of doing over the last few months. I don't know why I just been doing this, but sometimes um, you know certain things will pop up on YouTube. Everybody has their own kind of thing, um, things suggested. But I've been watching some things going on with some of these you know various pastors, televangelists that are kind of controversial. The things they say, the things they do. Um, we we also know there's even. The big thing in the news at the Southern Baptist Convention, there's a whole lot of news, uh, various sexual misconducts, uh, molestations, um, all kinds of things. Uh, very big report came out, okay, of many pastors. Now, it, it's kind of, I'm going to talk about one in particular that kind of came across that I was um, kind of fascinated by. Um, you know, it's definitely, it's going to get a little seedy. It's going to get a little seedy. It's going to get a little, little gossipy and controversial. But, uh, but I am seriously thinking about doing some spirit talks on some of these uh, uh, characters and, and everything that are, you know, heading these churches, you know, trying to tell you how to live a godly life. And, and they're in the background doing things. Okay? Okay? You know, so I, I definitely would like to kind of talk about it. Um, and we're going to talk about this particular pastor um, and they'll be, I, I have a feel. I may do a few more. I may do a few more, um, Ted Haggard. Now, um, before I, I start talking about him, um, and I'm, I'll talk a little bit about his wife and everything too. Uh, you know, it was kind of funny for a moment. I was blanking on his name because I, I, I already kind of planned to, to um, use him in a spirit talk. And I, and I may even throw down some cards and stuff as well, just see what spirit has to say. Especially for some things coming up if, if he may, you know, have some charges. Okay, for some things going on. Um, but, uh, you know, he kind of popped up and, and I was watching, you know, his, his situation. But before I was going to pull him up now and read you, you guys some articles to let you kind of know um, some of the things that are going on. You may have never heard of him because you're a tarot reader, you're a spiritualist. But you need to know, you need to know the other side. You need to know what's going on with these people. These people want to take over and, and make laws and stuff, guys. Okay, and tell us what to do. Okay. You know stuff like that so anyway but so that's why another reason why i like to know what's going on i like to know what these people are saying to people in the churches okay you know that because they're they're messing with them all right and i'm not saying you know i know there could be still be some good decent churches but there are a lot of shady people okay in these country uh, uh congregations now um I'm, I'm about to talk about him but um on my kindle i downloaded a book um, that his wife wrote, and her name is Gail Haggard, and I'm sure she's a nice lady, okay, but she actually wrote a book called, you know, um, Why I Stayed, what is the entire, oh, I, I just, oh, I, I, I'm trying to get the little excerpt, um, hold on, ah, Jesus, what did I do now, okay, but, it, but it is basically called While I Stayed, or, or whatever, and, um, it, it her book is definitely about forgiveness, Okay, so you got to understand this guy is pretty big, and even after his, and we'll get to what happened. He even went on Oprah with his wife, and they have this big thing, how he all turns around, but he's back in the news. Okay, so let's talk about it. Okay, so see, this is the thing. Some of us say, oh, you know, go to the congregation. Oh, I've turned over a new leaf. I, I, you know, forgive me and all this, you know, stuff. And I feel for this woman. I actually feel for this woman. I'm just getting into her book because I wanted to read her perspective. Um, and, and I will probably, I will probably do a part two and talk more. I'm still reading and stuff. And really, um, so far, you know, just innocently enough, they met, you know, in like, you know, uh, about, you know, one of the big Bible churches and, uh, 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 universities, I should say, and everything. And even, you know, he, he even asked her to marry him before they even had ever kissed. Oh, okay. They, this is a very kind of innocent kind of meeting. They're trying to be Christian. And maybe this guy, meant, you know, intended in the beginning to be a good guy. Um, I'm sure he's battling with something here. But he's also very hypocritical. Okay. And so, and so I, I definitely always like, man, I, I, I feel for her. 
you know, and, and everything, you know, but, you know, she's trying to be the good Christian, you know, wife, and, and let's talk about it. So, Ted Haggard, and so this is actually from Christian Headlines. I'll probably pull a couple articles, and then we'll talk about it. Um, controversial pastor Ted Haggard faces new allegations of sexual misconduct and drug use. Okay, so this is from the Christian Headlines, so let's talk about it. And then we'll get into some of the other stuff that happened in past. Disgraced Colorado pastor Ted Haggard is facing new allegations. So this is not his first rodeo um, involving drugs and sexual misconduct with young men. So, um, you know, what we need to understand here is he, you know, he had a very big church and we'll talk about it. And certain things, you know, when he would preach, he would be against, say, things like homosexuality or even, you know, um, encourage people, you know, voting, uh, you know, get certain laws like same-sex marriage and things. Okay, so he's he's speaking one thing, and then other things are going on. Haggard, the founder and lead pastor of St. James Church of Colorado Springs, so this was one he did later, okay, in Colorado, is being accused of using methamphetamine and touching two young men inappropriately on multiple occasions at the church in 2019. According to the Denver Gazette, one of the young men is believed to have been a minor at the time. So it's serious when, when they're a minor, okay? Uh, the Rev. Kirk Seth, Seth Moon, someone um, who Haggard ordained as a minister at St. James, shared with the church elders and the Gazette a pre-recorded cassette tape in which the young men claimed Haggard made them feel uncomfortable whenever he was around them. As somebody is quoted as saying, people are scared and worried and don't want to be connected to him anymore. Uh, Seth was said. Um, upon hearing the allegations, church elders called for Haggard's removal from the pulpit in April 2020. Haggard, however, retained his role as head pastor and moved the church services to his home under a new name, Storyhouse Church. In recent years, St. James Church has experienced a decline in membership due to the allegations against Haggard. The church's building was sold earlier this year. Haggard, a former president of the National Association of Evangelicals. So see, this is what I want to talk about. This is, you know, he's not just a little church. He, he, he was kind of a high-ranking uh, guy. First became immersed in controversy in 2006 after he was accused of hiring a gay male prostitute and using methamphetamines. So basically, um, the gay male prostitute, he was like a massage. Okay, he saw him quite a bit. Okay. At the time, Haggard resigned as pastor of the New Life Church. This was a church he started. Um, it was a mega church in Colorado Springs. Um, he founded in 84. He later launched St. James Church in 2010. So he, he kind of went through, and like I said, he said, uh, and I'm going to look for the Oprah, okay? According to Roy's report, Haggard underwent a spiritual restoration. Here we go. Process following the 2006 scandal. But church leaders assisting him shared that he prematurely ended the process after only 14 months. Now, I, I don't know if they're trying to, if this is some kind of deprogramming of being homosexual or whatever. Haggard also helped found the Network of Redemptive Churches in 2016. At the time, he told St. James Congregation in a sermon that the group trains church boards and church leadership in how to respond redemptively to the worst possible day so that someone else's sin is an opportunity to model the gospel instead of someone else's sin being a point of shame. Okay, so that's a, a little bit, you know, and uh, let's kind of go ahead and, uh, yep, so he's, he basically, um, the, the whole, the, there was a lot that came out, and let's try to go back, I want to go back to some of the older articles. Yeah, here's, okay, here we go. This is something only Sky Media. So back when this came out, when he was, you know, with, with this, with the, his, um, the one male prostitute came out, you know, kind of spoke out because he didn't like what this guy was saying, you know, voting against, talking bad about homosexuality, preaching and things that, and even voting against, you know, uh, a certain laws that make homosexual legal and all that stuff. Uh, it was very vocal about it. This guy's like, hey, this guy's been coming to me. And, and he found, he didn't even know about all this. He didn't even know he was a, a, a pastor. 
And then when he found out of all this stuff, he basically came out and, and uh, you know, and, and kind of spoke about it. Uh, you know, what, what was going on that this guy sees me. So, of course, uh, Ted, uh, Ted Haggard totally said, nope, this is not true, none of it. But then this guy had the receipts, okay? He had receipts and he had some, some voice uh, of voicemails and things like that. And so then he kind of had to, you know, admit some things. And then he kind of tried to fluff around about the methamphetamines, you know, kind of kind of like Clinton did about, you know, the, the smoking pot I didn't inhale. You know, just weird stuff like that. So, um, and of course, and then his wife, you know, went through, I'm sure, and she wrote a book. And then here they go trying to, uh, I'm redeemed and all this stuff. So this is from Only Sky. So here's another article. After a long stretch away from public spotlight, former evangelical hotshot, <laughs> Ted Haggard has been accused of, you guessed it, an alleged scandal involving other men as well as inappropriate drug use. If the name isn't familiar to you, congratulations on being young. Well, I'm not young. Here's the brief history. In the mid-2000s, Haggard was the president of the National Association of Evangelicals. He was one of the most prominent conservative Christian voices during the George W. Bush era. The guy, the media, always went for a soundbite. Then in 2006, a male escort named Mike Jones realized that one of his clients was his pastor on television. And see, he didn't know he was a pastor. Of course he's not going to say, hey, by the way, I'm a pastor. You want to come to my church? He doesn't want his kite covered. One of his clients was his pastor on television speaking out against same-sex marriage. So see, he's talking against, there it is, same-sex marriage. He's talking bad about it in church and all this stuff. And he's going and, you know, and everything. Jones went public with a story alleging that Haggard had paid him for sex and drugs over a course of a few years. So this is this went on for a few years, and he's married too. Okay, and uh, and he paid him for sex and drugs over the course of a few years. Despite Haggard's initial denials, he later admitted some of it was true. Well, because he had receipts, right? And didn't take long for Haggard to step down um, from the you know organization leave his Colorado church in disgrace, and become a national poster boy for Christian hypocrisy. The most amazing thing about his downfall was how quickly and thoroughly it occurred. This pastor, once on top of the world, this was he was a big guy, basically became a hermit. He sold insurance for a while, did a handful of big interviews in the subsequent years, Oprah, and always assisted he was heterosexual. For the past decade, though, he's kept as much lower profile. He began a new church, St. James Church, which we talked about in Colorado Springs. So I believe he may have went to California. He went somewhere. He went away because they basically said, get, get, you know, go kick rocks. Get out of here. They kicked him out of his own church. He started the new life. And, and then, then he kind of slowly kind of came back, you know, and, and stuff. Kind of, let me sweat it up again, you know, kind of thing. After this whole, you know, whatever. In 2010, and led it with relatively little public scrutiny ever since. So everything was kind of chill for a while, sort of. Okay, this past April, so this is recent. So the uh, he sold the building housing his church for nearly two million, supposedly shifting his focus to a new model home-based churches, and that's the backdrop for a new story in which two members of St. James Church, Elijah Haggard, is still making sexually inappropriate advances toward men, including one who was a minor, so this is, I'm using drugs. The centerpiece of the Desert Denver Gazette story is Rev. Kirk Sethman, that, remember that name again, who was ordained by and worked with Haggard at St. James. And here's a little bit. Sethman said he's concerned that as Haggard establishes his home ministry, including providing a children and youth uh, ministry room in, in, in the basement as Hagger describes the disturbance um, that the potential for Hagger to pursue inappropriate actions with use is high. My prayer is protecting the children and the young adults, Seth was said. Now, regardless whether, you know, like, you know, sex, you know, je sexuality, whatever, you know, and stuff, he should not mess with, he should not be around kids. I'm sorry. You know, he's, you know, he's, he's, you know, especially, you know, from, because he's already, 
made it, you know, some, you know, things, you know, things with the minor, made them uncomfortable, definitely, and he has this meth problem, okay? And the recorded statements of two young males, Speaker of Haggard, taking uh, teens and young men four-wheeling without shirts and their chests muddied and of a propensity to come in contact with their bodies beyond a, a typical s shoulder squeeze, is what it says. The groomer, it appears, is coming from inside the building, is what they say. And then, to be clear, there's no allegations of sexual assault, okay? Ted Haggard is accused of inappropriate behavior, uh, and it's worse. But the illegal drug use is a different issue altogether. A Seth Min was a direct witness to that. He says that in 2012, Haggard asked a church member whom he was counseling to buy him some meth. Word got back to Seth Min, and he brought a doctor who also attended the church to confront Haggard with him. Haggard admitted he had the drugs and handed a briefcase to Seth Min, asking him to get rid of the content so he could avoid the temptation. After Seth Min left Haggard's home with the briefcase, he said he decided to open it. Inside, Seth Min said he found a bag of methamphetamine, very little of the nearly one gram of meth left from what the young man had bought for him. So he used some. Um, also contained a well-used um, glass meth pipe, uh, multiple sex toys, a DVD with two young males on the cover, and a credit card with Ted Haggard's name on it. So he must have had maybe a little separate card. Maybe he didn't want his wife to know purchases, right? He said he didn't go to the police or tell other church members. I was protecting the young man, the church, and Ted. Seth has said, my choice I made was wrong, but I thought I was doing right. In 2019, Seth Min confronted Haggard about his past actions and demanded he come plead to the church and police. Instead, Haggard called the police, acting as a victim. In a tape of the 9-11 call to police released to the Gazette, Haggard described Seth Min as a delusional madman who had Haggard cornered in his church office. He also told the other member who was in the office with Sethman that he would ruin his life. It's just drama from there on out. There's no criminal investigation against Haggard, and he's never been charged with any wrongdoing related to those allegations. But the fact remains that the 66-year-old Haggard remains a Christian leader, albeit in a uh, smaller bubble than before. The power gives him access to young men, as well as a heap of unearned trust. At this point, you have to wonder why anyone would trust him. Then again, his entire life has been a series of convincing people they should trust him, then letting him down in the worst possible ways. So it's some some heavy um, stuff there. So there's, you know, allegations are kind of there. Um, definitely they're looking at should he be charged um, and things like that. Um, you know, and, um, you know, like I said, this, it, this, is, this is a guy who, you know, he, he'd go to the pulpit and be talking against, you know, like same-sex marriage, homosexuality. This is his thing. And, it, it, you know, in the background. And, and who knows what else he's done in the shadows that people don't know about. Okay? But it definitely, and there's a whole Wikipedia on him. And there's all kinds of stuff. So this is this is pretty pretty big deal here. So... You know, and even, um, but let's, oh, that's right. That's what I want to go and show you. And let's go ahead and see if we can find it. Ted Haggard and Oprah interview. Results for Ted Haggard and Oprah interview. Oh, there's an Oprah. Where are they now? Oh, that's a, oh, this is eight years ago. Okay, okay. Here's here's about ten minutes of it. Ted Haggard admits everything to Oprah. Let me get this so you guys can see the way he talks about this. This is a documentary coming out on HBO, and he's going to promote it with Larry King, Oprah, etc. So he went on Oprah. 
and we got a couple of clips from it. And you know what? It began to swing me, if you will. Okay. Uh, a little bit from the young Turks. Some sympathy for Ted Hager, believe it or not. And definitely for his wife. But we'll get to his wife in a second. Yeah, I, I definitely feel for Gail. Clips here where we begin to get a little bit more honesty. She just tried to be the good Christian from woman. Ted Haggard. Uh, you know. Clip number four, he says, let's oh, She wrote a whole book. And I'll, I'll talk so about the book I, later. I kept trying to deal with it in, with in spiritual circles. So when, you said, more when you said you uh, spoke to one of the spiritual leaders, you said what? I'm having these... I told him I was having uh, homosexual temptations and, mm -hmm. and thoughts like that. And I needed to process through it. What should I do? And do you think, and do you think you're gay? No, I don't think I'm gay. I did wonder about that. After this crisis... When I went to therapy, I said, I need to know, am I gay, am I straight, am I bi, what am I? And my first therapist said, you are a heterosexual with homosexual attachments. So we processed through that. I wasn't sure what that meant. Then we went through a, an no, am I. Yeah. <laughs> Noisy <laughs> audience. <laughs> yeah. Certainly yeah. so are the gay people watching well, right now. Yes. But yeah, it, it, and it is. I, I do believe. I don't fit into the normal boxes. I do think there are complexities mm -hmm. associated with some people's sexuality. I don't know about it. I would agree with you. Yeah. It, but, but it wasn't. It just wasn't as simple as I wanted it to be because yeah, because I was so deeply in love with my wife. Yeah, so deeply in love with my wife. Our intimate relationship is, is wonderful and very satisfying. But I had this other thing going on inside of me too. And how long had that been going on? How long had you been fighting I, those urges? I think all of my adult life. You say on the HBO documentary that seventh grade you had a same-sex relationship. Well, it, or, it, it, that's exactly right. It, it was it was seventh grade boys playing around. Okay. It wasn't serious. It was playing around. Mm -hmm. In the second grade, one of my dad's employees had sex with me. But it wasn't like abusive or violent or anything like that. And uh, that guy just disappeared, I think, my dad thought. Well, oftentimes, as you know, as a, as a pastor and uh, having experience with yourself, oftentimes sexual abuse um, isn't violent. That's the, that's the mistake right. a lot of people make, is that right. you think it's violent and traumatic. A really good sexual molester is going to make it pleasurable. That's exactly what happened to me. And what was interesting, see, I never saw it as abuse, even as an adult man. And then in, in therapy, I told them about how in the sixth grade I was still wetting the bed and still wetting my pants at school. Mm -hmm. And they said, oh, there is something there. And I said, but never have you said I had wonderful parents, I had wonderful siblings. We grew up on a farm in Indiana. So you didn't it was think a sexual encounter with your dad's employee when you were... I never saw it as abuse. And then they said, well, something had to traumatize you for you to be wetting your pants in the sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And, I, and then in just casual conversation with my therapist, I told that story. Yeah. And so when I told about that, they said, oh, that is the issue. Then they started dealing with me, dealing with that issue, and I started to get relief. But isn't the re So am I a sucker here, guys, for having some degree of sympathy for uh, Haggard struggling with this whole No, life? no, no. I, I mean, look. The, the sympathy yeah, I can completely understand, especially if he's young. You know, sure. Like that. I mean, that's where the damage is done. I mean, he's essentially been hurting himself for the last 20 or 30 years. Uh, Cliff, you're yeah. a little more hard-nosed usually about this, but what I know, I'm, I'm mean about these things. Well, uh, and, I, and I will be a little bit here. I, I had some sympathy for him from what he said. I mean, assuming, again, I, we have to, he's told many things that are not true. So let's assume he's telling the truth here. Uh, of course, anybody who, who is, uh, what I would say, abused or anything like that, uh, um, I have a lot of sympathy for. It's horrible. On the other hand, what, what still bothers me is he's still sitting there and, and trying to say he's not gay. Yeah, so, yeah, no, I off. noticed that. And then he said that the, this guy had told him, his therapist had told him that he's heterosexual with homosexual attachments. And then what my question is, what kind Which of attachments? Which had to be a funny turn of phrase. What kind of attachments? French tickler, you know, with me? <laughs> I'm sorry. I also noticed he said that, uh, okay, should I go forward with this or not? No, no, go forward. Go all the way. He said, that he, okay. I noticed he said he didn't fit into the normal boxes and uh, he had something <laughs> oh, else. Oh, that's right. I and he said he had something else going on inside of him. So, uh, <laughs> oh, that's all I Okay, now I'm done. <laughs> I'm glad you said that. I didn't catch either one of those. But here, I have a, I have a conclusion on his sexuality, though. I'll, I'll pound the gavel on uh, He's bi. I think it's Absolutely. Just, you know, okay. there is day. There's no, I mean, there is no complexity to it. And obviously, anybody who's bi has some complexity to it, right? But I don't want to attach with la, 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 la. He likes guys. He likes girls. Case closed. 
Yeah, I think that's exactly it, and I wish... I, I, don't know, I don't know about that. I, I think so, I, I mean, my thing is, that's a little, a little bit of him and a little bit of how that interview went. Or whatever, or going through so, the so it's... It, we we definitely see one of the things we can kind of look there. We kind of see the the interview and so forth. And he also has been on there like with his wife and and uh, and everything. And uh, I like I said, I I can hardly wait to finish a book. I I will talk about that. I would love to talk about maybe kind of her perspective of what she went through and, and things like that. Which some people are like they're very symp uh, sympathetic with with Gail Haggard, um, but there also is a little bit. I did notice there was some. Um, like people like that maybe part of the church or even the Christian community or whatever um, they the what they had a little bit of a challenge uh, with her and maybe the couple is the backlash that that they 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 had to deal with you know um, you know because you know how people are going to judge you know judge you if you get caught doing things you're, you're saying one thing and you're being hypocritical okay so but there was a, a little bit of kind of pushing back on that the the backlash like a, a little bit of you know victimization um thing there you know how unfair that people are treating us this way but it's like but that's a natural thing to do if somebody is going to go to the pulpit like i said this is somebody who's supposed to be you know godly and then they're saying you know god says this whatever you know things should be a certain way Okay, you know, a, a behavior is saying this behavior is wrong, but you're, you know, you're, you're going, you know, you're getting a prostitute, you, you're getting a masseuse, you're doing methamphetamine, which, you know, is, you know, that's where I, I, I'm not, you know, the homosexuality is, to me is not a bad thing. Uh, but if you're married, if you're married, and then you're going in, and, and also if you're going up at the church and you're telling everybody this is wrong, it's a sin, it's not, you know, and all that stuff. Okay, in front of others, it's one thing to have your own internal struggle. I can empathize. That's okay. I, if if he's confused, okay, but but to get up there and and be telling other people what God says and how to live and all this stuff, and you're doing other things, is very hypocritical. And that's very bad news. But the other thing too is this: you know, come out and, and be doing these interviews, and he's supposed to be reformed, and the marriage is supposed to be healed, and he's doing things again you know and, and now there are more allegations have come forward and i i don't feel these people are lying obviously you know they're feeling uncomfortable i don't think this is all let's just you know kick this dude out you know kind of thing here he's he's got a problem he's got a problem and he's got he's got a a, a thing you know but he uh, you know he needs to kind of come somewhere you know um at least you know kind of to kind of deal with you know Maybe who he is. If he's attracted to both, you know, uh, genders, he needs to, you know, there's a, some, some kind of acceptance um, and, and everything. And, uh, but definitely, you know, when you're going out and judging or saying people are doing wrong, saying you're going to go to hell and all that stuff, that's some terrible stuff, you know, when, when you're doing all this and everything. So he's 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 naughty in the dark. He's naughty in the dark with, with things he's done. And so it's crazy. And so, but he's, you know, he's going to get, you know, in big trouble, you know, he's, and, and I do, you know, get concerned, like if we're, if we're getting, getting near the young ones, you know, what's the thing you do with whatever is, is an adult, but getting near the young ones is concerning. But also just even looking at it, like, like I said, if you Google it, just, you know, you know, like, I'll, I'll just Google it. Hopefully, hopefully YouTube doesn't <laughs> nail me on this, but, um. Pastors being accused of sexual allegations. We'll just say it like that. I mean, there's so many, even recent articles. Um, let's see. Uh, venue church facing foreclosure and sale after a sex scandal involving pastor. That's just August 1st, 2022. There's a pastor uh, doing stuff. And of course, there's with the Southern Baptist. There's a whole lot of articles about that. Uh, pastors that you know uh, being accused it, there's uh, 12 of them in Ohio Southern Baptist um, here's you know just so many articles um, yep there are just tons of them over time if you just scan scan in Canada too you know uh, 
Here's one, May 19th, pastor at North Philly, uh, church is charged with rape, a sexual assault. Um, uh, all there, you know, there's that one. More Southern Baptists. Uh, let's see, uh, here's one, June 1, 2021. Uh, there's a Carl Lenz, a uh, repeated essay uh, by, uh, by a Hillsong pastor. Okay, so this is at Hillsong. Oh my God, there's so many, I mean, there's just so many. Just, it just goes on. And so, but there's a lot, you know, with the, with the, the Southern Baptist Convention. Tons. You know, here's one, uh, here's one, uh, July 24, 2021, California pastor arrested after teen comes forward with SA. A teen girl. You know, four New Jersey, Jersey ministers uh, named uh, Southern Baptist, they're all over the country, the Southern Baptist. There are so many. Uh, California pastor um, accused of kidnapping after allegations of SA. Uh, a Paris pastor has been charged with kidnapping after Proto Police investigated two allegations of SA. A, there are so many. It, it's so many. It's ridiculous. What's going on? Why do these things happen? What is it? You know, I guess this is kind of a little bit maybe my theories on, on some things. You know, maybe why these people go to, um, you know, whether they um, become priests or whatever, uh, a Catholic church or become pastors or whatever, you know, um, there obviously there are those that, that wrestle with something, you know, uh, you know, what whatever it may be, but they, they definitely do seem to uh, you know, pick, you know, there, there could be some cases where maybe somebody's trying to stay in the light and be a good guy. Um, you know, it's usually men. I'm sure it could be women too, though, you know, uh, but not very often, let's face it. Uh, but maybe there are those who try to go in the light, try to be godly, whatever, but always wrestle with a shadow in some way. And, so, and I know they could say it's the devil, it's the devil, but come on, it's just really their own shadow kind of stuff. And then there, there are those that do purposely go into these positions because they want to be in a place of power so they can manipulate, control, and abuse. There are those, you know, that do that. There's many. There's many. And it's ridiculous. In, in the Ted Hanger case, though, he's definitely wrestling with something. The more he tries to be this, and it's all ego. And that's what, and it's very Jungian. Um, that, you know, it's all ego when you're trying to be this, you know, uh, this pastor in the light and godly. Uh, there's even a very egoic, um, I wonder if I can find the photo. Um, let me show you what I mean. Um, pastor Ted Haggard images. Let me see if I can find this one. Images of Ted Haggard. Yep, there it is. That's the one. I, I Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Yeah, this one here. If you see him, I mean, that's just, just so much posturing. When I see this image here. I mean, it's like, you know, you know, holding the Bible, the hand up and on the knees. And, and, and really just, it's so fake looking. It's so, it's so ego. It's ego. Okay. And so, and, and that's the thing, you know, we know that from, you know, it, it's just like, those, you know, they'll put this kind of, this, this ego thing, you know, try to be all perfect, whatever, you know, try to be this model that, that everybody looks up to and whatever. But you know, then the shadow is always creeping up. And if you don't acknowledge your shadow and deal with it, it's going to, it's going to take over. It's going to knock you down. It's going to, it's going to push you out. That That's what it does. And that's definitely what he's, he's dealing with. And really, if he was going to do anything, you know, you know, just kind of somewhere acknowledge, you know, that he's obviously, you know, he, I, I think the one guy probably just don't, you know, he has a clearly an attraction for both. But, you know, the more he's kind of avoiding, you know, certain things that are just him and, and trying to keep up this image, he keeps trying to try and go back and be this this person that, that really he's he should not be doing. Except the, the shadow is always going to keep creeping up and getting him. And, and unfortunately, this uh, this poor woman, you know, she's in this marriage and she's trying to be this good Christian wife. That's pretty much probably the way she was raised and that she went to this, you know, like a Bible college like he did. You know, she's probably just doing her best and, and got to put up with this crap all the time. 
I see that's one of the, the things that, and that, like the book even said, why I stayed. You know, and, and she, I'm sure she's just trying to be a good Christian wife and, and all that. But with more of this coming out, is she going to write a book while I left? <laughs> you know, and that's kind of what I wonder. Let's just kind of, we'll just kind of look at some cards. Since it's a spirit talk, I'm going to do it as a spirit talk. I'm just going to kind of look, you know, um, what, you know, really, you know, if spirit has anything to say to us about it, um, what's going on. And like I said, you know, I'm not necessarily trying to pick on someone, but this is a real problem, guys. This is a real problem. You know, I, I see, I guess it's, I don't know. You know, the churches be talking about the witches and the, you know, the psychics and the tarot readers and all this. You know, uh, you want to mess with our spirituality. And look at these guys and what they're doing. And so, you know, it's crazy. It's crazy. It ain't the witches you got to worry about. Okay. Sister. Okay. These people are hurting people. Okay. That's what it comes down to. You know, that's the important thing. And so, and, and so I would like to definitely talk about some more of, of these things. You know, definitely. But let's kind of go ahead and see, you know, what Spirit has to say about it. Well, like I said, I, I completely empathize, you know, with Gail. You know, having to put up with this bullshit, all, you know, and, and everything. And she's trying to, do, you know, do the right thing and, and all that. But you got to be miserable and sick of it. Okay, you got to be sick of it. Okay, you know, just more, more of it coming up again. He's supposed to be reformed, redeemed, fixed, <laughs> whatever. Gone through this, this, you know, and he's right back at it. You know, you know, and if some things happened when he was young, like he was saying um, in the Oprah interview, I, I can understand. Um, but still, you know, he's grown up now. He's a grown up. You know, he has, he's had money. He could afford therapy and, and work on healing and and all kinds of stuff. But if he's, you know, traumatizing other people, you know, that's not good. Okay. Okay. That's kind of what Spirit has to say. And I did see the Seven of Swords peek at me a minute. We'll probably see the higher fan. I would be surprised. You know, unless the higher fan's like, ooh, this is too dirty to show to. Let's kind of go and see what's going on. Except, yep. So we got the the two of wands here. Um, you know, which is kind of interesting. I mean, that is a Dominion card. Um, but yeah, you know, the 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 two paths. <laughs> he seems to walk from both roads here. Let's just put it that way. He's he, it's kind of goes. He walks, he's trying to walk in the light, and then he, he will switch to the other path of the dark and, and everything. He seems to always be you know, walk in two different paths here and, and everything, you know, and uh, that that does make sense, you know, what's going on and, and everything, you know, trying to walk this whole Christian road and everything and then, you know, it takes another road all the time. And so, so notice, see that cross in the middle, science, and that is the Six of Swords, but that cross in the middle, I, I, I know that the Six of Swords is a little bit different, uh, but what if things, you know, he's, there. it can be a moving card, uh, moving away from troubled water um, and everything. So one of these um, definitely uh, so many different things there. He he has moved and then he moved back. Um, there's that. We got that cross, that cross, you know, there and everything. And um, but also, you know, we could even look at that that trying to move away from you know troubled water kind of energy, go into better position. Um, definitely leave some of the the you know the past stuff behind, but you know goes right back into it and so forth. We got that five of swords, that defeat, defeat. And so he, he does. He, he's, he keeps defeating himself, really. And so he's obviously fighting something. That's kind of a battle card. He's And he just loses, you know, every time. You know, it, it's just certain things he, he needs to kind of accept, accept his, his nature and so forth. And everything. So we got that queen of swords, energy. You know, that kind of makes me feel, you know, um, his, his wife, you know, may, she may be, you know, the queen of swords may... You, you know, she's getting older. Hopefully, I, I hope she's getting wiser. You know, and, and I know she's trying to be diplomatic. The Queen of Swords can be trying to be diplomatic, keep the peace and, and things like that and everything. But she's got to she's gotta be frustrated, okay, you know, with certain things. Because the heartache, the sorrow, the Three of Swords, you know, he's, he's causing people pain. Definitely his wife. I, I, I really feel for his wife. You know, I, I really, I, I mean, overall... I know this is, you know, I know some people can mock it and find it funny, but, um, you know, because you know how, you know, when pastor does this and everything, 
And yes, there are certain things about him that are very ridiculous. But I think of his wife, and I think, you know, the, the suffering, but also letting down your, your congregation um, and everything. And also making people uncomfortable is not good. Um, there's, there's a lot wrong with that. And, of course, the drug use, which that card may pop up there. But, you know, the Wheel of Fortune, um, and, you know, when I see that card, you know, certain things, I mean, he had a promising career, you know, things where I see sometimes people got this, you know, there's this weird self-sabotage kind of stuff in him sometimes because obviously he was doing very, very well. He was obviously the leader of this evangelical thing and stuff and just, you know, that's something about it and everything. But we've also got that seven of wands and everything and that kind of makes me feel certain people kind of, you know, you know, um, him, you know, fighting people off, coming at him, you know, for certain stuff and everything, you know, and, and also just the squabbles and everything I can imagine. And stuff. But I look at that truce card. Now, see, that's the Four of Swords energy. Let's talk about that. Let me talk about what sometimes that means. Now, this is very interesting because the Four of Swords, and I'm going to show it to those who, um, you know, like I said, not everybody always is familiar with the tarot. And all my cards are falling down. So, oh my God, I got a, I got a tower of cards here. But let me show you this. I want to talk about this card. Because it does have some meanings here. Which, because I, I look at intent. Did he intend to change? Or was this all a big, and maybe he, maybe to a degree or maybe not. But I want you to kind of look at that. See, it does have a church look. We've got the stained glass window. And we've got this, this person. And it almost looks like he's kind of, it almost looks like he's contemplating his death. So this is that Four Swords energy. It is also called the Truce card. Everything called kind of, and I almost see, feel like a truce within. I remember we got that defeat, the battle within. And oh my God, I just see the truce, everything inside, whatever internally to calm down. But also the Three of Swords. Okay, the swords come out of the heart. You know, those I've heard, especially the wife, other people who trusted me, things like that. You know, an entire congregation, you know, that, that you know, you were made up a critical way except well one of the things the four swords can be about is kind of laying low which remember even in the article it said kind of being a hermit a while contemplating the next move it's kind of a deep meditation definitely that church you know energy there but also that laying low sometimes the four swords for me can be this i kind of wait till things kind of calm down the heat is off and he definitely has some years of you know kind of wait till things settle calm down and stuff but sometimes that lay alone doesn't mean i'm just not always that i've changed okay but i'm just waiting till the heat is on and then when everybody stops looking at me i may go back to business okay i do see that so like for instance in cheater reads sometimes um say somebody is going to give the cheater a chance and i will look at certain cards and that can be one of my um concernings that maybe somebody's just lay low and just you know and it's going to wait till maybe she's, she or he, uh, it does have, st stops looking at my phone and stops, you know, watching my every move, you know, as, and, and when things calm down, then I'll take action. So it's a little concerning. And, so, and also we got that churchy thing. You don't want to get back in with the church. I want to, you know, get back, get back to that image. It's good money, right? He was making good money. That's one thing. But also, you know, to be, you know, admired as this, you know, absolutely, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, Princess Edith and stuff, sir, looking for a new opportunity, obviously the finances, and stuff. It looks like, you know, selling insurance probably wasn't, wasn't, uh, you know, a fun stuff and everything. But, you know, want to be successful. Yeah, I'll see the success card and, and everything. But also that Knight of Cups, you know, that makes me feel, you know, trying to, you know, kind of, you know, be gentle with the wife, maybe make amends. You know, I, I really will say this, though. I, I still get to lay low. I still feel, you know, I still, believe it or not, I feel he loves his wife, um, you know, and wants to, you know, keep that. But I also, she's part of one persona, okay, one personality. What is his, I'm just curious, what is his birthday? Is he Gemini by chance? I'm just wondering. I'm just one, but let me just take a peek there. Ted Haggard, Wikipedia. Okay. 
Oh no no, he's June twenty seventh. So no, he's he's uh, he's the sign of Cancer. So actually, that fits the water sign, Cancer. And we've got a little crab, so that fits perfect with this sign. I w I was just wondering, you know, just definitely the the two personalities. But no no, that fits Nine of Cups, the Cancer, the crab. He's a Cancer. That's right there. Interesting. Perfect. So it went dead on his sign. But yeah, I you know I'm uh, trying to, you know, renew maybe renew vows with wife and, and things like that. Definitely. But there's, there's still a lot of sadness and pain. Let's kind of look at him, 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 feelings, attitude, emotion, the moon. Definitely the moon can be about deception, obscurity, and things. And even uh, subconscious forces and pleasure. Oh, damn. The pleasure card. I said, which can, in this deck is a little different. You know, it's something he, he enjoys this, okay? You know, the, the drugs and the, you know, he gets pleasure out of it. But we've also got that, that justice, which can be, you know, really, what he could get into legal trouble. Okay, if somebody wanted to bring charge. But he but making people uncomfortable is not necessarily assault. But could some other things come to surface? Um, actually, it's a possibility. I'm spilling myself, sorry. Um, it is a possibility because that justice card is popping up. I'm wondering if somebody's going to come forward about something. <coughs> <clears throat> it, he could get in trouble. Definitely for the drug use. But yeah, we got that two of swords energy. I'm, I'm now focusing on his wife. I'm not sure of her birthday and stuff. Uh, you know, matter of fact, I wonder if I could find... But she has a Wikipedia. Hang on a second. Hang on a second. I'm about to talk about something. Gail Haggard Wikipedia. I don't know if she has a Wikipedia. Hold on. She does. What's her birthday? Oh, April 8th. That is... Is it that Aries? Or is that Taurus? Hold on. What is April 8th Zodiac sign? According to entertainment, how stuff works. Despite it is an Aries. Okay, she is Aries. That's what I thought. Okay. <coughs> but here's where we're at. When I kind of focus on Gail's energy, the wife... I've got the Queen of Pentacles energy. So even though she's in Aries. Um, but I also think one of the things about the Queen of Pentacles energy. You know she could definitely be very caring, compassionate. Taking care of others is kind of her her thing, her energy. There could be a little financial. I think there. But I got the Two of Swords. Sorry guys. <coughs> My throat's been bugging me. The Two of Swords. Okay. Which could be. So it makes me feel. She is on the fence about something at the moment because of some of this new stuff coming on. I mean, she went through this big old thing in the more earlier 2000s. You know, she's had she got drugged through, you know, all this in the media and all this disgrace and all this. Wrote a whole book, which I still want to get to get to get to the good stuff with that. But the two of swords can be to be in a stay or go position. So I don't know if she's she's going to go through another thing here. I don't know if she's going to stay till death do us part on this. She's thinking about something. Good for her. Good for her. The outcome is the tower. Yeah. So remember the outcome is still things to come here. So something's coming. Uh, so it, it, obviously I, I think he did get thrown out of the church. Um is what's happening or they're trying to throw him out or whatever but um he's yeah it, it's just another falling hitting rock bottom again he's he's doing it again all over again and it's uh yeah the tower you know it, it's it's going from bad to worse here i mean how many chances can a congreg congregation church make you know give you for for doing these things it's up. So really, I mean, you know, as far as with him and, and how this all goes, and you know, look, I mean, God, the tower, I mean, his, it, it, Gail may actually, she's, she's definitely, she's definitely weighing the situation here. I, I know she is with that two of swords because that's her position. I sit next to her and I'm sure she's thinking, you know, the finances is one thing, definitely. Though still, you know, she would, she would probably make that okay, right? Um, but it, at the same time, you know, if a person is very faithful Christian, you know, pastor's wife, 
you know, to, you know, divorce, you know, is it, such a, it, it's a big thing where, where many people walk away, divorce is easy. I so it, it, this is a struggle, especially if you, oh my God, I wrote a whole book why I stayed and hey, he is again, got a briefcase full of shit. You know, and you got to be frustrated. I, I don't know if she, let me see if the, um, let's see, Ted and Gail Haggard and recent events. Just kind of do it that way. Yeah, so more of these allegations. I, oh, he's got his own website and everything. Uh, but here, oh, okay. Now, this was just, let's kind of look at this. Um, this is um, something, oh, this is NPR.org. Ted Haggard's wife, this was February 5th, 2010. Marriage stronger after scandal. Come on, no, it's not. This You don't get stronger. Um, but anyway, so let's kind of see what this, this is in NPR, you know, Faith Batters. And let's see here. Let's let's look at a little bit from her perspective. Like I said, I, I will talk about her book. I will make notes, I promise you. Gail Haggard was living the life of her dreams. She was married to the senior pastor of a thriving church with thousands of members, a mother of five. See, that's, you know, that's got to be hard with kids. And a faith leader in her own right until it all came crashing down. Well, honey, it's going to do it again. Okay, that's the outcome. In 2006, her husband, Ted Haggard, made national headlines when he stunned members of his Colorado megachurch by admitting he was guilty of sexual immorality. Homosexuality is not immorality. But, but if you are married and you are, you know, preaching to people that this is immoral and then you're running off with a, a prostitute you know for a few years and getting high on meth with them ted ted Hager made national headlines when he stunned members of his colorado megachurch by admitting he was guilty of sexual morality after a male prostitute went public with claims that he and haggard had been in a years-long sexual you know, relationship. I, it was probably more business, but okay. The details painted a sharp contrast to Haggard's public persona as an evangelical heavyweight who aggressively, see this, aggressively advocated against same-sex marriage. The Haggard too became a symbol of disgrace within conservative evangelical circles and were derided as hypocrites by liberals opposed to Haggard's faith-driven political ideals. Now, see, they shouldn't really beat up on Gail that much, but I know. But there are some things, you know. Now, here, here it is. Now, four years after her troubled marriage was thrust into the public spotlight, Gail Haggard has ended her silence on the scandal. So this is in 2010. Um, and why she chose to stand by her husband's side, as chronicled in her new book, which is I, I'm reading, Why I Stayed. Oh, here it is. The choices I made in my darkest hour. In a recent interview, Haggard told host Michael Mitchell Martin that she never considered leaving her husband. Well, are you thinking about it now? Because I got the two of swords. I thought about who I am going to be in this story. What do I really believe and what do I really value and what's worth fighting for for me? She recalled. My marriage, as I had known it, was definitely being challenged, but it was worth the fight. She got the two of swords. How does she feel now in 2022? Still, she acknowledged that her husband's sexual deceit put the marriage in serious jeopardy. He was unfaithful to his marriage vows to me, and he didn't lie to me. And so on many levels, there was a breakdown, she said. There was a moral failure in our marriage. A failure in our marriage. Yeah, I said that. As a result of the scandal, the Haggards were swiftly ousted from their new life church. The church he started kicked him out of his own. In an agreement with church leaders, they promised to uproot their family and leave their Colorado Springs community. So they, they, they had to get out. Haggard is still disappointed about how their former partners in ministry responded to their crisis. See, this is, this is where I'm talking about, well, what do you expect them to? Saying they seem more interested in pushing them away 
then rallying around them with support when they needed it most. See, this is the thing that gets some people's goat. A little bit about Gail and, and everything. It's like, why would you rally around with support? You lied. You cheated on your wife. You, you lied to the entire congregation when you were confronted and, and this guy came out and told the story and had the receipts and, you know, and stuff. It's, you're, how do you trust that again? There's a, with, with any, with, with any, you know, of course, spiritual leader, teacher, trust is such a big thing that somebody is going on there or, or maybe you're, you know, they don't just like talk in a pulpit. They do counseling services for marriages and, and they're, they're, you know, Bible studies for kids, so many different things being involved in people's lives. So, so yeah, you know, if something very big like this happens, you know, rallying around with support. I found it to be a very corporate approach and disrespectful of the relationships that were involved, she explained. I felt that it wasn't representative of what the church is created to do. To represent Jesus, who is forgiving and understanding of our human condition. Okay, so I see this. This is this is a big thing, and like I said, I'm reading her book, and this is why I, this is a big thing. Why I want to do a spirit talk. Forgiveness is is a big thing. Yes, absolutely. It's the cornerstone of the faith. Absolutely, but there are many. Look, like I said, you saw me Google. Oh, look at this pastor. This pastor. This pastor. Many have used that forgiveness cornerstone, okay, to try to get away with things, you know, and try to make others feel guilty. And she's doing that a little bit, okay? But you're supposed to be forgiving. That's not Christian. You know, okay, listen, listen, okay? But he did it again, okay? Certain people, when they, if they, if they go through, you know, if they stand up there and they say one thing and they're telling you how to live your life, and all that, but in the shadows are doing other things. I hate, hey, people make mistakes, and uh, should people be forgiven? You know, I, I, I get it and all, but should you be a leader, again, for many people, and, you know, you're supposed to be this pillar, you know, and stuff of, of goodness and, and whatever. And like I said, I'm not talking about, about being gay. I'm talking about the cheating on the wife is my issue. I've got the, the drugs, trying to get people, you know, and stuff. This, this, this stuff. Okay, and, but also saying bad things about, you know, speaking aggressively against same-sex marriage, you know, preaching against it, and what you're doing when no one's looking. Okay, this is not cool. Okay, so of course, people, what, what, what else? Get out. You know, forgive, forget, you know, it's up because Jesus will forgive you and let him continue to go back to business. No, you still got to suffer some repercussions. That's called karma, justice, karma. You still got to deal with certain things. And stuff, and stuff. And maybe maybe Jesus says forgive it all. That's all good and everything. I can forgive you in my heart, but you shouldn't be leaving my church. Okay? And he's back at it again, making people feel uncomfortable. But let's, let's get to it. So I have a little problem. A little problem. When, when Gail tries to project and blame other people. And stuff. Because there's still... You know, it, it's it's like, you know, what is it? You know, once, you know, shame shame on you, second shame on me. We, we don't want to get the shame on me section. And so, but right now she's dealing with a shame on me. There's this whole thing here. She says all this stuff and he's back at it again. Like I said, he's been, he was laying low. Okay. And so he's obviously got some kind of inner battle great and all, but he's still, you know, he's obviously... They, they caught him with, with some stuff in his briefcase. He still got the itch. Okay? And, and it's, it's not good. It's not good. But let's get to it. The Haggers have since returned to Colorado Springs, but with far different realities. But they were whisked away four years ago. Instead of being spiritual guides of 14,000 members, but he did start growing again. This Remember, this is in 2010. This is 12 years ago. Uh, new life, you know, he's, he, so he did hosting sprawl, you know, smaller and then he started building up again, started to get some leadership. They got him again. You know, same thing. And Ted Haggard has since undergone therapy um, to help him address what Gail describes as same. She describes him as same-sex temptations. Um, 
which she says stems from childhood sexual abuse. Which, like I said, maybe, you know, um, now, it, you know, it could just certain things if there's been some challenges like in childhood, you know, I, I understand that there things can happen and stuff. But obviously, regardless, you know, this whole trauma and stuff, you know, he's, he's getting a prostitute, he's doing meth, you know, and stuff like that. Um, they, the temptations were troublesome to him because they didn't fit well with what he felt was him. Um, he has felt it though he was heterosexual. He's not. Uh, he's, he's obvious. I, I, I agree, you know, and even the two of ones, um, really kind of one path, one path. It's, it's right there. You know, I'm trying to go one path, but I go that path. It looks like he's, he goes both ways. I, you know, the two ones, the crossbow, he goes both ways. That's what he is. That's the way it is. That's him. He goes both ways. That's what we call it, right? It, it, it's not just a, a, a heterosexual. He goes both ways. Okay. As for her intimacy with uh, Ted, and what, well, they, they shouldn't even ask. That's her business. But she says, uh, Gail says her marriage is <clears throat> now stronger than ever. So I want to say intimacy is not a solely sexual. There's a, a closeness. You know, intimacy is something deeper, of course. I think oh, that we walk through this because we're better for it. When asked what advice she would offer, now I'm kind of worried. When asked what advice she would offer to other couples struggling through problems of hurt and betrayal, she emphasized the value of forgiveness. As much as you're able, for the sake of your own heart, try to forgive and try to love. But your results may not be the same as mine. She she does at least say that. So that's that's a tough one. And like I said, I'm not beating up on the woman. I it's it's got to be hard as hell to be in her position. But still, at the same time, it's like you 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 need to be understanding of people when it comes to you know um, not the you know not trusting someone after they've let let you down like that and stuff and it's you know i understand forgiveness but it doesn't mean you know if forgiveness should not necessarily be a, a whole pass here uh but clearly clearly if he's he's still at it like i said he goes both ways you know he's fighting something that that you know he he obviously is attracted to both i i agree with the guy i i and it clearly the the two of one seems to be saying exactly what he's saying but, you know, she needs to kind of sit there. Like, she's in that two of swords moment. That makes me feel she's probably sitting there, you know, boy, I, I wrote a whole book. You know, why I stayed. I've said all this stuff. Uh, she's saying, uh, the fact she's saying I never thought about leaving. Yeah, she has to. It has to have crossed her mind. Okay. Um, you know, and I know there maybe there, there is some sympathy to some, maybe some things. Maybe he has, you know, in past or whatever experience. But, you know, and, and, you know, I appreciate that maybe he was trying to be open. Maybe there was something there. But he, but it's an ego. You know, when he tries to be this leader, it, it, it's an ego thing. And, and he needs to just, you know, he's got to buckle down and do some shadow work here. You know, and, and stop trying to do all this stuff. You know, that's that's the thing. Except, but it's a, it's a fine example. It's a, a fine example of some stuff here. Um, you know, but with the hypocrisy... So one thing is I'm, I'm going to kind of keep an eye on, um, but you know if, if there, but seriously, but the other thing with justice, you know, certain things could come up, you know, if people if something comes out of the woodwork and and some charges, you know, could actually come if it's not at least drug things, you know, possibly, you know, he 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 could get arrested for something, um, you know, there are some challenges there. But it's, um, but I will, you know, like I said, I'm going to do, I, I want to definitely do a critique of the book. I'm still getting through it, working on it and everything. I'll, I'll speak out a little more, but, but that is definitely, um, you know, some things, you know, that I was, that I was kind of looking at and everything. But, um, yeah, that's, you know, that's, that's crazy. But like I said, I still empathize with her. You know, I still have to, I have to take, like, say if Gail came to me for a reading, I still have to take Gail as she is. You know, she's been raised, you know, a, a, you know, Christian, conservative. This is this is her. This is kind of her, her life. Um, you know, so, you know, I, I definitely, I know she's probably been weird, you know, standing by the side of the husband. Divorce is not 
you know, a, a good thing. Though Jesus totally tells everybody that, hey, adultery, you know, uh, and everything, you can you can leave. It's, uh, you, you know, Jesus really didn't like divorce and all is, and everything. I, I know he's not very big on it. But, uh, you know, there's there's reasons to, uh, you know, divorce. But I, I, I feel, though, I, I just want to clarify. Let me just talk about that a little bit. I know Jesus says save for adultery. You shouldn't get a divorce kind of thing. But what I feel, and then he... He goes into this thing, what people need to understand. He kind of goes into things about how, how you know, in marriage and vows, people are yoked together. Okay. Um, so what I really feel, you know, it's not necessarily Jesus saying you can't get divorced. What he was trying to really emphasize is the importance of marriage. How you're yoked together. And the two become one flesh. Which actually... Um, is very, very true. Um, and I know sometimes we think of that, the two become one flesh. Is that some kind of, you know, some, sometimes people think of some kind of sexual thing or something. Um, not necessarily. Um, and I know, you know, we think of flesh and stuff, of course, in the, the physical and stuff. But he's really trying to emphasize how connected they are. Um, one of the things I have kind of observed, you know, as a, um, as a spiritualist, and, and some people may be like, yep, that's true. Um, some people, you know, but just what I kind of learned is especially when people take a vow in marriage, you know, when we talk about chakra and links, whoops, we're about to, okay, good. I'm just going to make it. When you make that vow, when you do that vow before God have that marriage, all the chakras are linked together. All of them, all of them. Okay. So everything, I mean, when you've got, you know, your, your connection to divine from the crown, but everything links together, especially the heart, of course, and stuff, but all of them. So when Jesus says the two become one flesh, and then even as a spiritualist, I, I observed and, and learned that the, the two, you know, beings, especially as spiritual bodies, their, their chakras link together, okay, as one, okay? And that's why if, if any of you have ever, you know, going through a divorce, which of course divorce is painful, but some of it, you know, where you can feel something's just a part of you ripped out, those links, when they start cutting, and they don't cut all at once all the time. They don't. Except, but feeling that, you know, the cut is, is, is where people can feel kind of empty and, and kind of lost, you know, like something's missing and, and how hard it can be. And so, now, even in natural, you know, um, connections that don't necessarily involve marriage, um, you know, links can certainly form. But when you take that vow, that marital vow, you know, before spirit, God, and that's, so, so see, that's why I feel like spirit, I don't really feel that Jesus is, is trying to say you can't get a divorce unless there's adultery. I know some people have tried to go with that, but I feel what he's trying to do is, is emphasize that when you take that vow of marriage, you know, you're like this. And so you, you, you need, if you're going to take that vow, it's a very serious serious vow okay and i feel it, it's so you know and, and so it's just it, it you're not going to go to hell if you get divorced it, it's not as you know it's, it's not but yeah you know, of course you know, i don't believe in hell anyway um necessarily he's the way they kind of portray it but he's just trying to emphasize the important when you take that vow there's how the two become one become a part of each other and, and, and everything so i understand you know it's it's more that than that so with with that whole speech that i just said as a, I understand that Gail, you know, it, you know, it, it, she's of the Christian woman mindset to support the husband, especially being a pastor's wife. I, I'm sure she's trying to do the right thing, though still should not project on others if they're kicking them out. I so said she, she still needs to be understanding that, you know, they're, they're trying to protect themselves and maybe somebody else should be a leader, right? Maybe somebody else should run the show. Okay. That somebody's got some work they got to do on themselves. Figure figure out whatever whatever is going on. So it's a little controversial, but yes, you know, a lesson, you know, forgiveness. That's that's one of the big ones. And stuff, you know, I can and like I said, I I can understand, you know, Gail in a position, you know, forgiving initially in the beginning, especially if he's pleased. I'm so sorry. I'm sure he did the whole crying tears and and all that. I'm sure he did, you know. But, um, you know, at the, now, but as this is still a problem, clearly, it, it, 
it's looking like it's still a problem. She, you know, are, are we going to write, you know, why I stayed again? <laughs> I mean, what are we going to do here? You know, what are we going to do here? But I do notice that two swords is there. You know, a person can only take so much. You know, that's that's another thing. Even, even you know, even a, a Christian woman. Hope you enjoy my talk.